Rest directions. So how was check-in? Super easy. If we were already on the list and I gave him our site number and um, he gave us just a little map. So we're clear up here in site number 69. So we go up the road and then the way we're able, we picked a spot like right on the end. So it should be easy to, to back into. Um, and he said, just keep every, all of our stuff on the gravel because they do have sprinklers that go off. So if you have anything on the grass, it could get wet overnight. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Silverwood RV Park. So we are just a little bit north of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. If you're not familiar with where Silverwood theme park is, uh, we actually have a video that I will link if you're curious uh, about the theme park itself. We're actually in their RV park, but not going to the park, unfortunately, this time around. Uh, we we're just talking about what a bummer <laughs> it is, the fact that we may not go to the park. Um, it's still a maybe at the end of the week if uh, all else fails and we can't think of anything else to do. but. Uh, the trip here, we're actually here for one week uh, at the uh, Silverwood RV Park. We're going to be working remote and testing that out. Uh, the awesome thing about this specific park is we got four bars. Yeah. Right now. Just with our phone without using the extender. So. A uh, really awesome thing here is we're here on uh, the shoulder season. So I think this is the last weekend. Uh, this this was this is the last weekend for the water park. Um, the from here on out the, it's closed during the week so this is the first tomorrow will be the first week that it's closed awesome part about that is very few people here this thing holds we'll, we'll we're gonna go around and take a, a tour of the whole entire park i think there's 80 plus spots and there's maybe 10 are filled right now and our guess is tomorrow it's, it's pretty much going to be empty so if folks are using this rv park during that type of during this season when the amusement parks close they're basically just traveling through and so we're here actually to check out the city of sandpoint and we hope to uh, bring a video to you folks about that. But this one's going to focus more on the campsite, just in case you're interested in staying here. Uh, if you're going to come to the amusement park or maybe you're just passing through, hopefully we can provide you uh, some good information about the park. So anyway, uh, sites are fantastic. We'll show you around. Very level, uh, all gravel with a fire pit, a uh, bench, and then just a bunch of green grass all around. So it's pretty. It's a, it's a, for an RV park, it's the best, one of the best ones we've ever seen. Uh, and you're just not right on top of each other like you are in a lot of RV parks. So right. anyway. The nice green grass. So like they had said at check-in, um, to only put your stuff on the gravel because the sprinklers come on. And it's evident because they still you know, have green grass. If you have any questions about this uh, RV park, let us know. We'd be able to answer any questions you might have after a week of being here. I think we're going to know everything <laughs> that there possibly is to know about uh, Silverwood RV Park. All right, good morning. Day two. So far, um, pretty impressed with the place in general just because of how quiet and clean it is. Uh, but uh, one thing about our channel, if you guys have been following us for some time, we don't get any sponsored deals and so we don't get free RV parking, right, babe? So uh, we're going to give you the good and the bad. And the bad is uh, you're right next to the highway here. So uh, Silverwood Theme Park is right across the road from the highway. Um, and then where the RV park is, you've got four lanes of 70 mile plus uh, traffic with uh, our uh, big semi rigs and what have you. You can probably hear them in the microphone. Um, so our recommendation would be if you do stay here, know that it's going to be pretty loud, uh, especially if you stay closer to the highway. Our uh, recommendation would be to stay, when you check the map, stay as far back uh from the highway as possible even if you stay as far back as you can it's still going to be loud we almost can't even hear ourselves talking <laughs> I, um, I guess the one thing about this place so if you keep in mind we're working remote so most people wouldn't be here during the day to hear it anyway they're going to be at the park or out exploring or doing whatever <laughs> that's a loud one um and at nighttime um it starts to die down a little bit um you know past 10 o'clock of course uh, most of the trucks and uh travelers are off the road so uh, the night's not too bad, but uh, during the day, definitely uh, pretty loud here. So as you can see, we are directly across from the highway. So there's a room for some small RVs here up against the fence. Uh, so Which we would not recommend. Yeah, don't don't get one of those fences. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you can help it. Right. But you can see, you got spots deep out here. We'll hopefully try to be able to walk around there at some point today and show you what uh, we'd recommend because you can get quite a ways away 
Look at that brown one way back there yeah. in the back. Right, anywhere probably aren't going to hear. And the entrance to the, the campground you're pro is probably going to be your quietest. Yeah. And we'll walk over there and then we'll know. So here's a really nice pull through that yeah. I would highly recommend if you can get this one. Here you've got all that grass is basically yours. Right. And you don't have anybody behind you. You got a little path. Now this is probably the nicest one I've seen. Yeah, this this one somebody was in it last night. That's why we couldn't. We couldn't oh, you get saw it. somebody I, in I, it. Yeah, because one thing one thing I always do when we book a new place is I'll go on and I'll look at their map, and then I also hop on Google Earth and yeah. try to see the overhead shots from Google Earth to see how close are the spots really because you won't you won't notice that you won't you can't tell that in the maps that they provide. Um, but Google Earth. Google Earth is your friend. Yeah, so 51, uh, great spot with just a huge grassy area. Uh, and then the rest of them here, the other pull-throughs, our backups are fine, but they back up right towards the bathroom area. So you might get some traffic going through camp, but yeah, that's about right, pretty cool. Right, because you got a bunch of, there's tent sites. Uh, these are RV sites here, but there are some tent sites in there, so they'll be trekking through. So as you can see, like 36 here backs right to the bathroom. Uh, and they got a play, Play area for kids, volleyball court, uh, sand volleyball court, and then that nice little play area for kids. So you look at this pull through here, and you've just got yeah. people here, people over there, people there. So this is 22. So this would not be one that we would recommend if unless you, you come with a group them. and you get you get yeah. the sites together. True that. Then that'd be cool because you're. All right, so now we're back in the back of the park. And uh, Kim was definitely right. It's much quieter back here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can almost barely even hear the road. Right. If we were in our trailer, we wouldn't even know. Yeah, you wouldn't even know. It. We're in a, we're in a you know, Four Seasons trailer, so we have the extra insulation. You can still hear the cars going by. Learn from our mistake. <laughs> so definitely uh, recommend if you can, uh, try to get back here in the back towards the back fence if you want to get away from uh, all the noise of the road. Nice thing, too, is they've got a bathroom, then couple porta potties too so you don't necessarily have to use your own RV bathroom if you don't want to but oh yeah I guess for we're campers tent, Duh. For all the tenters because there's only there's only one like community bathroom so it's nice so if you're far out here they have periodic uh, porta potties out here you don't have to walk too far to get to the bathroom so far, yeah. all right the life of a remote worker how is it connection wise because people want to know connection at uh, the RV park yeah, so as we've shown in a prior video, um, we just used the SIM card from our cell phone and we bought a modem and a router there in the trailer. Uh, we have more bars than we have in our house. So the connection out here is absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Now, I don't know, once the campground's full, you know, you may have, um, you know, less bandwidth kind of thing, but <clears throat> yeah, well, the full four bars is what the, is what the modem's showing. Um, I was on a video conference call earlier never glitched once. I had full on video, was seeing other people on video, never had issues. So it's been perfect. Yeah, and I'm working inside the trailer and um, also had a meeting this morning, same time she was in her meeting and uh, no issues whatsoever. So if you're needing a place to stay uh, where you can get really good um, coverage for um, cellular, I said Wi-Fi I think earlier, but I meant no, cellular. You're definitely going to get three or four bars here so definitely a nice spot if you need to work remote or uh, have some connection all right so we are on our lunch break taking a walk and uh we noticed out of the 100 plus sites we're there's six vehicles yep everybody's left six <laughs> trailers no six tents. trailers so uh it's hilarious just to walk through here and we basically have this whole entire campsite all to ourselves now keep in mind it's always going to be like this it's only like this because the park is closed uh, and they got this really nice path that we're walking on that takes you directly to the park so we'll go underneath the highway um, and then unless so they close it off. <laughs> yeah unless it's closed so we'll see but that is again the nice thing about staying here is um, the only option you'd have would be to stay in well not Coeur d'Alene there's closer Hayden Hayden Coeur d'Alene um, and the sand points yeah, quite a ways right. that way so it's just a good uh, option if you do have an RV and you want to come to the amusement park and have or a good time. Want to tent it. Good way to go. Or tent it, yeah. True. If you've never been to Silverwood or know of Silverwood, uh, Kim and I have been to a lot of amusement parks and uh, this one's just cool. It's just a neat 
it's small um, compared to if you think about Disneyland's and Universal Studios and things like that, but it's just got such a cool feel to it being all yeah uh, it's, Victorian, I guess. Or, right, and it's small. It's you know like one of those like family owned and operated kind of things. Yeah, they got a nice cool train ride. In fact, I think the owner of Silverwood actually outbid Walt Disney. Oh, oh they did close it. Darn it. Too bad it wasn't remote controlled. I can yeah. send it all the way through. Let me in. Let me in. Number 11, Kim was saying, nice pull through. Uh, but unfortunately, here's your road right here uh, where your campsite is. Luckily, probably won't have a lot of people driving in and out of here very often, but something to consider. Because right, there's only 10 other sites. You and 10 other sites because this is again one of those just little loops. Oh, yeah. So the people coming in here are the ones staying within these 11 spots. Yeah, so one thing that's nice about here is it's like you have the main road that goes through the whole thing and then it's like little arm branches off to the side to where they only have like 10, 11 spots. So you don't have heavy traffic going through your, your campsite all the time. It's only the people that are going to be staying in that little branch that are going to be coming in here and pull them back out. So it's, it keeps the, you know, keeps the road traffic. Yeah, since it is gravel, that would be something you'd want to uh, concern yourself with, uh, depending on where you park. But again, like she says, as long as you're not on the main road near one of these little branches, should not be a problem. All right, so that does it. Another trip in the books. How many days was that total? A lot. A lot. Like 11? Yeah, I think it was 11 days. Um, we feel like full-timers now. Uh, anyway, so what did you think of Silverwood RV Park? Um, it was nice during the week when it was quiet, um, but the traffic was really loud. And we, as we, we initially thought if you're farther back in the park, maybe it wouldn't be as loud. It's not, it's not big enough even if you have other RVs. You know, I thought maybe once other RVs came in, they would block, like, be a sound barrier. Uh, but it didn't help. The traffic's yeah. really loud. Traffic's loud. The, the good part is if you're, if you're going to Silverwood Theme Park, uh, your five minute walk, you don't have to pay for parking, so that part's great. That's where most people that are staying there are staying there because of that. If not, if you're just here to visit this area, we highly recommend the State Park, which is 10 minutes, 15 minutes away maybe. Farragut State Park, uh, beautiful State Park. We'll show you some of that video um, as well on this, or you've probably already seen some of that video of a beautiful State Park. Uh, four bars as far as Wi-Fi goes. So if you're working remote, you can't beat uh, the Wi-Fi. There's so. a cell tower. Well, you might yeah. even be able to see it behind me. Yeah, it's back right out there. there. Yeah. Right oh, there. Nice point. There's a cell tower. Yeah. So that's why we discovered it when we were during one of our walks. We're like, oh, that's why we get such good service. Yeah. So it's right there, right next to the park. So for working remote like we did all week, yeah, you can't find a better spot. We did notice that you could get some service in the state park, but uh, you just wouldn't know that until you worked in there to be sure because you could get caught under some trees. And who knows, the nice thing about this is it is wide open, uh, but boy, that traffic is loud. I mean, we got noisemakers. Kim's got earbuds that she uses, and uh, that, that drains it out, the earbuds. But even with my fan and my noisemaker going, uh, still pretty loud. So overall, uh, it was a nice park. I would just think if I was to stay here again, if I wasn't going to Silverwood for the week, then we would definitely stay at the state park because it's just not that far away, so. Right, and even I've heard Ravenwood, which is a mile down the road, um, it's a, a newer RV park just put in in 2015, um, that it, it seems like it'll be quieter. It's a little bit farther mm -hmm. off the highway and they have, um, from what it seems from driving past it, a row of trees. So that'll block as a sound barrier between the highway and the and the RV park. Another negative thing too, 60 bucks a night. Um, so it's not not cheap place to stay. Was full hookup, which was good. Um, you didn't get that at the state park. I don't think you get sewer there, so you'd have to dump if you stay for a while. But uh, 60 bucks, pretty steep, similar to like a KOA or what have you. But again, it's for the convenience of uh, having the park. So, And being out-of-state residents, we don't know what the actual um, cost would be. Because it seems like um, the state of Idaho has doubled the, the out-of-state resident uh, uh, fees for different things. So for the state parks. Right. And we did the same thing in Oregon, so can't really fault them. So. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. See ya.